Whoop, whoop. Welcome, every, everyone. Welcome, one and all. How are you doing today? How's the trading going? Keeping confident? Yeah? Mark says, fantastic. That's cool. Daniel he says, everything's good, good, good. Well, my name is Wayne McDonald. Let me uh, grab my business card. I'm the chief FX market strategist for tradersway.com. I do these uh, live Forex trading strategy sessions every single day, Monday through Thursday at tradersway.com. You just need to open up a demo account or even better, a live account. You can join us. And every Friday's here at FX Street. So I'm here to help. Uh, I don't have any sell, anything to sell you, no, um, no DVDs, no, no nothing. So uh, I'm just here to help. So my plan today is we'll go over some technical analysis. We'll go over some fundamental analysis. We'll look at things we've set up in the past. We'll set up some new things. Uh, I don't know if you want to do some like binary options trading strategies or something. Um, I'm okay with that as well. You tell me what uh, what you need, and Uncle Wayne will provide. Mark wants some USD CAD. No, not that. Anything but that, Mark. Oh wait, this is USD CAD. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mark, look away. I'm going to share this with everybody but you. No. All right. Yeah. Sure. Let's get going. I'm fine with that. Uh, this is USD CAD. This looks a little choppy, doesn't it? Lots of funny colors and um, and shapes. Oh, Jeff, you're sending messages privately. Please change your settings so that it's um, doing uh, the request publicly, okay? All right, so... The first thing I want to discern, and, and, and I actually talked about this yesterday in our strategy session. By the way, that's available at youtube.com slash C, as in channel, slash Trader's Way. Um, and so anyways, what you want to first do is ask yourself, what kind of market are we in? D is this uh, trending up, down, or sideways? Sideways. Cool. So should we use trending tools or range-bound tools? I suggest why don't we look at range-bound tools, okay? And that would be things like oscillators. All right. So once you've decided what tools you should be using, um, the next important thing is to identify whether you're at support or resistance. If you're not at support or resistance, everything else is useless and nonsense. Okay? There's a lot of support in here. There's some resistance up in here. I think there's a little noise to the left. So there's the range, the top and the bottom. Okay? And then what you want to look for is when you're at support, you want to look for a kicker like that. Price comes up to about here, gives you a kicker, ignore it. Why? You're not at true resistance. Resistance is up here, okay? So you just, you know, in a sideways market, the strategy is buy low at support when it's oversold. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Up here, okay, sell high at resistance. Okay, do you buy this? No, we're not at support. Do you sell this? You could if you missed the first one. Do you buy this? No. Do you sell this? No. Do you buy this? Maybe. 
You could have probably thought that. That wouldn't have been bad. I'm sure you would have had to stop below here, so you would have been fine. Or if you missed that one, this is even better, right? So we just kicked off that. In fact, that's what I did. That's the trade plan from yesterday, guys. How many people remember ending with USD CAD? I haven't changed this chart since yesterday. We drew this gray line, and our plan was up to here, as you can see, and then down to here, as you should be able to see. Can anybody confirm that? No. Oh, YJ took it and's in it. Nice. So you can see the plan here, here. It's already on the chart permanently. Now, to back off even farther, what's the longer term trend? Well, we had a range-bound market. There's the resistance. There's the support. And guess what we were doing? Okay. Buy at support. Right, sell up here. There's you can see that there was some divergence for a while. Very nice. Buy at support, right? Maybe sell at resistance. Okay, buy at support. Then what? Lower high. More importantly, lower low. So we immediately set up a, uh, a sell zone somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement, and we pay attention to the old support as it should become future resistance. And you may notice this pullback. It took a week to go through this, but we were ready. Absolutely. Down. Retrace between the 3A2 and 618 down and now we're range bound again. So you go from trend trading here with Fibonacci to range bound again using oscillators, okay? And the key to everything here is if you're not at support and resistance, don't do anything. So Morgan, um, so up, right? Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, depend, Depends on what the definition of up is. It kind of sound like Clinton, right? Depends on what your definition of is is. Um, well, the the thought process is just range. So to me, it's not up. It's just sideways. <laughs> but I suppose, yes, we could argue that it's up. Okay. So we're just playing the field here. Top, bottom, and we're just moving sideways Okay. And that's it. So, yes, up to the upper red zone. It's not really up. It's sideways. Okay. Nice. I hope that was helpful. But uh, this, this pair has been tradable for a very long time. You notice I don't even have moving averages. You don't need them. You don't even really need the MACD. Let's kill that. Okay, let's simplify. Okay, now until it reverses, I would assume that the general trend is down. So that's why you say up. Well, it's not up, it's just not down. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm thinking for now until that fails. And then when that does fail, I'll adjust. But I'm not going to assume it's going to fail. I'm going to assume it's trending. So it'll move sideways for a while, okay? And then what? Okay? It'll kind of do what it did before. Until the trend fails, and let's say it does this. Cool. Then I'm going to grab this dip and trade it up to here, but then I have to fib this whole big move, and then there still might be a drop like that. 
but we'll see then. I'm not going to plan on that happening. I mean, I know it could, and if it does, I'll recognize it. But I, I prefer to be generally a trend trader, and if the tr trend is generally down, uh, I, I don't mind buying dips. I could just ignore it, or I mean uh, buying rallies. I could just ignore it and get ready to sell up here. And continue to do that over and over and over and over and over and over again until that fails. And then I will adjust. So that it's helpful to have conviction because you, you can very often get yourself in, your, in situations where you think it'll, it'll do both. Oh, but, but if it goes, uh, but if it, uh, uh, it could, uh, and you're just a mess. <laughs> so even if I'm just fooling myself, it's a helpful uh, personal trading strategy. Even if I'm fooling myself, I'm okay with it. Okay. Any other requests? Boom, boom, boom. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, well, I guess we got to do Euro sometime, right? Okay. Generally speaking, what is the trend? See, yesterday, no, sorry, two days ago, today is going to be the day that I'm going to come back to you. By now, you should somehow realize what you got to do. All right, so two days ago, maybe even three days ago, um, our trade plan was this. Was it a bad plan? Mm. Ooh, I just drank last week's coffee. Uh, pfft, wrong cup. Uh. Ew. Um, okay, it's not still good. It's dead as a, as a Georgia armadillo with four feet pointing to the sky. But it's not a bad trade. It just lost money. Realize what you got to do. Let me get you some candy. Some ah candy that eels. Here it is. Ready, set. Boop. What do you stink? You can see that we measured from the top of the crown to the bottom of the neckline, took that distance, moved it over here from, right, to the downside, had our little target. You could see we double topped in here and we're thinking about going, right? So the trigger hadn't been there, but we were pretty close. Uh, two things, not the world's greatest. Um, you, you see how the dotted neckline is slightly up i would prefer that to be horizontal maybe even sloping down we didn't get that but really is that why it failed see to me the fact that we got a seven eight six or even more i would do that over and over and over again i would set this up the way that i set it up here but horizontal or even sloping down would be even better. Okay. But I think the technicals here are quite solid. What happened?
Was it sloppy technical analysis? Yeah, retail sales came up bad. And right now the market's sensitive to that because we're looking for signs of inflation and an improved economy because much, many of the market participants are already or have already um, started um, long ago to front run uh, an imminent hike in interest rates by the Fed at the Fed funds rate, right? And um, people have realized that that was just wrong. And so now they're getting out of this your Euro USD short because of the central banking policy divergence strategy. And um, some people were still hanging on to the hope that uh, if not June, then September, but retail sales are bad. Right? And the trend in NFP is slowing down a bit and there is no inflation. So now we're thinking September, December. And yeah, that's what it was. Fundamentals changed. And according to efficient market hypotheses, all that information is immediately priced in. And what you see here immediately is no um, hike at the Fed soon. So our discussion yesterday was you don't keep beating a dead horse. You don't sell here and sell here and sell here and sell here. And you're like, because, you know, using technical analysis, this didn't fail because of technical analysis. The technical analysis failed. This is all fundamental. So to keep shorting is a little silly. One, one thing I talked about yesterday the, is if you were kind of doing this and shorted up in here, like took a little shot, okay, that's fine. Um, but someone said something about floating losses, and I went ape crazy. And I'm not going to go into the same conversation. You should have been there yesterday or watch the video. I'm highly sensitive to people's language. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so, yeah, you might want to say, like, treat it like this, like that was a, f a, a failed move, kind of like that. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. There are so many things that I would like to trade for you, but I don't know how. So maybe. All right. So whatever. So, yeah. Um, I'll, so I'll, I'll tell you my future behavior, and I'll tell you now, okay? I will stay neutral to bullish. See, I'm not bullish. I, I just think it's going up. And by the way, every Monday I review the Commitment of Traders report, and if you attend that, you will know exactly why I am confident that I'm not a bull. This market is simply going up. And I can show you the evidence that the price is going up, but it's not a bullish market. And you say, well, Wayne, I don't get that. That sounds like, no, well, you need to attend on Monday. And I don't know how. I'll invite you. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to stay a neutral until I see that. There is my future behavior. Okay. Okay. I will stay neutral, which means this is the Euro USD will continue to move up until I see a pattern like this. Most importantly, a lower low followed by a lower high, and then I will sell this down to parity, maybe even down to 80. But fundamentally, what I'd like to see is that the Fed is starting to prepare the, the market for increase in interest rates. <clears throat> that ain't going to happen. So here's my prediction. Um, I, I wasn't 
at my computer in the last 22 hours. So I don't know what Draghi said yesterday. Did he say anything interesting? I think Draghi was in, uh, he had some sort of press conference or speech or something. Did he say anything important? Honestly, I don't know. I haven't. Usual, okay. So here, here's what I think is going to happen. Okay. He is going to need to do something drastic. And he could just do it by saying something. I don't know what he would say, but he, he, he might say something. Hello, Buzzy. How's Cairo treating you? How's the weather in Cairo? Terrible. <laughs> It's hot, it's humid, and it's polluted. Oh, 39. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, well, good to have you, Buzz. Um, so, Draghi has been spending billions of, of euro with the intent of lowering the value of the euro and increasing asset prices. Um, well, for the last... Five weeks, the opposite has happened, and um, I, I'm sure he's taking some heat on this one. So he might have to do something before the Fed does something to to weaken the euro. And then if the Fed in the future, let's say 2016, the Fed starts actually hinting that they're th maybe starting to think about it, then now you'll get a ripper strong dollar. So everything we do is fundamental, guys. The technicals just put you into trades and take you out of trades. But you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. And that's the fundamentals. So anyways, uh, I think Draghi is going to need to say something in the next uh, couple of weeks. I don't know what that's going to be, but he's going to say something to weaken the euro. He doesn't want to spend more money because then he has to go through the Germans. So he can just say something like, I'll do whatever it takes, that type of thing. Yeah. So, again, I don't know what he's going to say, but I, f I feel his pain right now. I think he's in a tough spot. So I'm just going to stay this. I, I am a bear on this pair. Okay. Um, so now uh, I'm a bear and I'm neutral. Okay. And this could, you know, so hopefully we don't go up too much farther. But unless Draghi says something, uh, we could drift quite highly. Uh, we could drift certainly 118, 122. And the whole world is just going to be dumbfounded. Well, you know what? They were dumbfounded when it came down. Now, I swear to you, I covered the Euro USD short at 140 for thousands of pips. I predicted it at various non-farm payrolls over the course of you know four or five months in a row. Okay? So the, the Euro USD coming down like a ton of bricks is, you know, obvious. The only thing is I was very, very early, months and months early. Um, and one of the reasons um, it didn't happen as soon as I thought it was going to happen is Draghi was very slow to act, and we didn't get the fundamental points. We, get, we we're technically set up. We didn't get the fundamentals, and then ended up creating a double top at 140 before it dropped. You know, did I say it was going to go down to 105? No, but I did say it would drop thousands of pips and it would be fundamentally based, and then... One, you know, uh, once the Fed started to kick in and taper and do their stuff, um, then you would have that perfect storm. And now the euro would continue to move thousands of pips more, not based on euro weakness now, but based on dollar strength. Okay, fine. So now we got the QE. Great. Euro's weak. Well, actually, I reversed that, right? The, the, the Fed tapered first. That was dollar strength. And then it was, you know, the try to get, um, try to get QE was the beginning of the the euro weakness, right? 
So no, 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 no. Will we hit parity? All right, here's what I've been saying, Mark, for six months. Um, I don't give two hoots about her- parity. Okay. Um, I think I think you could go to 80. Why not? Yeah, why not? Who cares about... I'm not a computer or something, right? I don't like, oh, we, 1.000. Yeah, no, why? If, if the, if the ECB continues quantitative easing, it will devalue the currency and increase asset prices. This is why you should have been long DAX a million years ago, right? Okay, we're, we're good on that point. As long as the ECB is tapering, or, or I mean, um, uh, doing quantitative easing until they taper or stop. If they taper or stop, it's over. Start buying euro back. Am I clear? Or am I like, mm, I'm going to be really vague so I can come back and sound really smart, tell you I told you so? Or am I clear? Because I, I tell people, I am a bear on the US dollar until the taper is announced. And so I was a bear on the U.S. dollar for, I don't know, three years, two years. I can't remember all these cycles. Two years. And then the day they announced it, I became a bull and have been a bull ever since. Okay? So I'm clear. Until the ECB um, starts to taper the quantitative easing, their bond purchasing program, the, I will be a bear on the euro. And that will just continue. Now, what price will that go to? I don't know. But why Why would it stop at parity if the euro's at parity and they're still printing? Now, if the ECB freaks out at parity and then they, in turn, stop uh, quantitative easing, well, then they'll change and then I'll change. But I don't care about parity. You can go to 60 for all I care. Probably not, but you know what I mean? As long as they're doing quantitative easing, I'm a bear on the euro. Done. Enough said. Next, we haven't even begun the U.S. dollar bull market. It started, but it started on false assumptions and um, misinformed billionaires. Okay? Okay. They were wrong on the Fed tightening cycle. So the market should have turned bullish at the taper, but the, all the taper is is less bearishness to the point where they tapered all, all the way to the point where there's no quantitative easing. Okay, that, that that's just not bearish, which is another way of saying some bullishness, right? But the euro, But the euro dollar crash, much of that had to do with traders and investors front running this silly uh, interest rate hike by the Fed that never existed. I mean, if you actually read what they talk about, there there was no chance, none, that they're going to raise interest rates. None. But it doesn't matter. It's what people think. Facts are almost irrelevant. It's what people do with their money that's important. So, they were wrong. They somehow made the decision that the, the Fed was going to raise interest rates. So they do what, what you're supposed to do, buy U.S. dollars. Dollars ripper strong right at a time when euro is weak. This thing dropped 4,000 pips. Great. It shouldn't have. Oops. The Fed is not. Okay, you guys, you, you, you read too much. You need to think more. This is what you read in the newspapers and stuff. Yeah, okay. Strong greenback. Yeah, okay. But not really. Okay? Th- this whole idea that it- it's going to hurt exporters and stuff. And Look, all, that at- all of that is balanced by other things. The, the Fed doesn't care about that now. There's a- they'll care about it later. But like five years from now. Do you guys remember like when the dollar was weak? 
And everybody's like, the dollar's so weak. It's the end of the dollar. The dollar's going to crash. The dollar's on fire. We're all going to use the renminbi as the reserve currency. Blah, 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 blah. Chickens with their heads cut off, running around, making a bloody mess everywhere. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky. Don't. Gee whiz. Right? So don't worry about that, Andy. We'll worry about that later, okay? So anyways, the Euro USD came down like a ton of bricks, and uh, people, a big chunk of that was people front-running the Fed when they shouldn't have been. So now we're getting this pullback. It's healthy. It's normal. It's required. People are rebalancing their portfolio because they made investments based on interest rates rising in the United States, and they were just simply wrong. But they will eventually normalize interest rates. Okay? Okay? They will. When that happens, and even just before that happens, the U.S. dollar will be ripper strong again. What would likely happen in that scenario? If the Fed, let's say now it's February of 2016, and the Fed is thinking about raising interest rates, and the ECB is still doing quantitative easing, guess what? Right? Yeah. So remember, just keep the fundamentals in mind at all times, guys. It makes sense if you just think about it a little bit. So this could go up to 118. I mean, it could be 115. That's why people wanted to sell up here, 115. Okay, that's kind of a psych level, right? But it could be 122, it could be 120, it could be 125. We need the fundamentals in there, not just technicals. Think about it. Central banks and large institutional investors are not buying and selling you the euro USD because of technical analysis. I've told you guys many a time where I've been in rooms filled with hundreds of investors, uh, or sorry, traders that manage billions of dollars each. And many of them would laugh me out of the room because they use technical analysis. So anyways, so let's just put it all together, right? Oh, you mean how do you, uh, you know, hmm. <laughs> how do you get in the fundamentals? Um, you know, I would start with central banks. Okay. I would, that's where I do my research. Because um, it's not, it's not an easy thing, right? So I am teaching a, a few people about, I don't know, how to trade. And here's what I did. I started by de spending an hour defining what money is. Y you see how crazy I am? spent an hour like what is money what's wealth where did money come from and why because i trade money i've been to um chengdu in western china because it was the first place uh to record paper money where they actually use bank notes to buy and sell stuff so the, i've been there <laughs> i'm that crazy right so i uh, that's where i'd start and then and then, you know, that led to banking. So then I've spent another, like, hour and a half talking about what banks are and how banks work because it affects money. Then I spent another hour and a half talking about bank accounting, how banks actually make money, make decisions, in the account of money, but more importantly, the multiplication process of fractional reserve banking. 
Well, who impacts fractional reserve banking? The central bank. So let's talk about central banking now. So like, so like I said to you, I would start with central banks, but then I would have to start with commercial banks, which then I would have to start, you know, well, I would have to teach you how banks actually run, not just what they are, but actually how they work. And to tell you that, then you need to know what money is. So like, you know, hey, Wayne, teach me fundamental analysis. All right, well, give me a year. <clears throat> so, so I'm going to take them through an 18 month process, but that's me because I'm crazy. Yeah, no, I'm nuts. I'm a psychopath of pips. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, uh, so uh, yeah, so there's my Euro USD thought. This could continue to go up for quite some time. How high? I have no idea, and I would have no idea how you would expect me to tell you. It will go up until it stops going up, but I can tell you fundamentally, I can prove to you, and I don't have the time today, but I have the time to prove to you this is not an uptrend. Prices are simply rising. Do I know how? I'll give you in one word. There are no bulls in this market. And I know for a fact. And at the close of trading today, my facts will need to be updated because new information will be available. That's called the Commitment of Traders Report where large institutional investors on Tuesday, and this would be like giant hedge funds and giant corporations and so forth, had to report to the Commodities Futures Trading Commission their actual positions, real money in the market. We're talking about billions of dollars, and I can prove to you that this is not a bull market. It's only going up. Confusing, right? Well, the thing is, because I know this information, I am ready to sell. It might be here. I was ready two days ago. It failed. Bad news came out. The market said, whoa, I was hoping for a September rate hike. That's less likely now. This goes up, and it will go up until something fundamentally changes. The, so, therefore, I don't think the Fed's going to change anytime soon. Therefore, it's got to be Draghi. If Draghi comes out and says, weaken the euro, I don't know how he's going to do it, but you know what? It'll happen, and we'll talk about it next Friday, right? And if it does, then I'm going to get a pattern like this one down here. My technical analysis will confirm my fundamental analysis, and I will make a ton of pips, and it will be sickening. Or I'll get a few break-even trades, and we'll cry about it. One or the other. Because I'm ready, brew. All right, next, how else can I help? You want to do some binaries? You want to do some trades? Just like to update it, make sure she's fresh and so clean, clean. What to, uh, okay, what to buy or sell now? Well, there might not be anything to buy or sell now. Why don't you tell me what you think looks like is that support or resistance? How about that? Tell me what's ready, and I'll look at it, and we'll talk about it. Come on, guys. There's like, what, 86 people in the room. Somebody must see something somewhere, right? Well, let me ask you, did you buy the DAX yesterday? That was the trade plan yesterday. Talk to me, Goose. Ozzy Swissy, forget about that. No, I'm not trading in the 
Indy. So, Ozzy Swiss, forget that. Pig Yen. You are not alone. Indices. Oh, okay. I am here with you. Yeah, we can look at S&P. Do, 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 do. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm getting old, huh? Everybody knows my jokes. That's what my wife says. She's like, you you bowling. You is bowling. <laughs> like that's how my wife talks. <laughs> um, all right, well, what am I supposed to do with this? What in the world do you expect me to do with this? Besides lose money. Okay, okay, that's something there. Yeah. What am I doing? So this has all been planned out. I guess I can get rid of that fib. Yeah, what is it that you want me to do here? No, that's actually pretty cool, Andy. Um Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. As long as you got a strategy. Um I've seen traders that are just like their their trading's a mess. When I look at their trading history, there, there's, there's no correlation or logic behind it. It just looks like they just threw darts at at their charts, and they were long euro in one and short euro in another. And I'm like, I just can't not. I just cannot figure out what you're doing. Now, if you showed to me a bunch of emerging market positions, and it made sense logically, intelligently, let's say you know, everything against euro or everything against yen or everything against dollar, then I would see what you're doing and I would say, you know what, you're a specialist. Yeah, it's just a specialized thing, but if that's your alpha, I'm happy that you're doing that. It just, I need to be able to look at your trading and understand what you're doing. If I look at your trading and, and it's just there's no no discernible strategy, then I'd say forget it. So, anyways, right on. Uh, so, anyways, I don't know what you'd want me to do with this. Uh, sell it? I I can't buy it. But why would I sell it if it's been going up? You got to give me something. Uh, the hourly says, um, you know, you could short it, right? But I don't know. Really? No, I don't want to do that. Next. Give me another one. Come on, guys. 87 people in the room. You can't find me a trade. Euro Kiwi. You guys are so funny. Uh, you know, I don't have Euro Kiwi. Um, boo, boo, do, do I? Euro Swissy, Euro Kiwi, huh? I got Euro Czar. <laughs> oh, look, Euro Kiwi. Yeah, all right. All right. So, yeah, okay. So, let's, this is it. All right. Am I at resistance? No. My support? No. No, I'm not going to buy it, and I can't sell it. Next, Kiwi Cad. I don't think I have a Kiwi Cad. Uh, no. Um, buy pound dollar and euro dollar. Uh, well, let's look at pig. Boop. Thank you guys, by the way, for participating. When I say no, it's just those are things I'm not watching or um, 
or typically trade. All right, so um, move that. That's an hour. So here, this is where we are here on the piggy. Yeah, I could sell that. You want to do that? Check the single. Ooh, a little late. A little late, dude. Um, should have shorted it in London. You know, oh, I can't short this, dude. We're not. No, I can't short that. You're killing me, guys. Um, I could short that. Okay. Um, but I can't sell that. We're close. You are not alone. Yeah, you should have been in this hours ago, man. You should have been in this yesterday. Uh, like, I'll show you what I'm thinking. Let me get rid of that. Okay, if you saw we were at the top of the channel, which you may have if you were using technical analysis and you were already a bear, you had a very significant drop, then this would have been your, your sell zone. And, yeah, uh, you, you, you know, you, you'd be taking profit now, if anything. So then your next chance is here, which I already have marked out, which is the measure of this wave now. Okay. Like this. So, there, you know, I can't sell now. I mean, it's going to rise. Do I want to buy it? You could try to buy it if you want it. If you're a bull, okay? It's not the world's greatest, but, you know, I would assume if I was a bull, I would assume a range. In this case, I would assume that we're going to head up there. Okay. Where's my drawing tool? So if I'm a bull, I think it's going to do this. Okay. As a bear, <clears throat> you could have already been short here. But I could be short up there, and then I could be short here. So my shorts would be uh, one here, and the next one there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So on this small time frame, it looks like a mess. You go out to the four hour, and I see what you're doing down to the 55 and then probably double top that. So let me plan the next move now as a bear. Okay. You notice something here? I already have a trade plan. Okay. This was the plan from last week. So... We might have done this Friday of last week, guys. But the plan is this. Can you see that? So selling off the top, you know, we already have that planned out. Dropping down to here, we've already planned that out based on this stuff. And then we already have it coming back up later. Which means what? No Fed hike this year. Right? So now it's multiple time frames. Work your way down, work your way up, work your way down, work your way up. How do you trigger your entry when the market has already turned? So let's go back now to a 15-minute chart. That's what I have planned here. If you missed the first one,
Hang on, let me zoom in. Okay, well, that's what essentially what we're doing now. Wait for the pullback. It's trend trading, right? You expect it to make a, a lower low, so you're trend trading. And so somewhere kind of up in this green, this gray area, you can measure it differently too. You can measure it like in here, so it's that area. So um, that's probably too confusing. How about doing it this way? Okay. That you so you could up to here and then down. If you're a bear, you sell green candles. Okay. If you're a bear, you sell green candles. I just see a bunch of red candles, so I can't sell that. So let it be green for a while. Let it come up to here, somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement. And then on a five-minute chart, I will look for evidence that it's rolling over. So like on a five-minute chart, it's going to look like this. And then, and then, and then, right? And then I'm short, baby. That's how I do it. Okay, Carlos? Carlito? Well, DAX will trade just like a, like a currency based on technical analysis. The one interesting thing about stock indices is that they want to go up. Okay. And if, if the stock indices are falling, people are going to want to buy them up because, simply because they're cheap. Consider them like a physical commodity. Okay, unless the market's crashed, like the end of capitalism, which we're past all of that, then, then market participants want this to go up. And if it's falling, as long as it's not crashing, if it's falling, then people are going to come in and buy it simply because prices are low. We call that revaluation and rebalancing. Other people call it profit-taking. But they're going to want it. So, like, if you produced wheat, uh, if you bought wheat because you're a company that makes breakfast cereal, and that's your business, as long as you're making breakfast cereal, you're going to make 7% a year profits because you've been doing that for year after year after year. And you know how to make cereal, and you know how to package them, and you know how to dis distribute and market these things. You always make 7%. Great. Your number one cost, however, is wheat. If wheat goes up, you're going to need to hedge it using futures contracts. If the price of wheat goes down, you buy as much of it as possible because you actually need wheat. You physically need it. And you're like, man, this is cheap. I'll just pay to put it in storage. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy it at this price. It's falling like a ton of bricks. I need to, like, secure this wheat. Okay? And stocks are similar. They're financial instruments that you can't eat them, but th th it's wealth. It grows in, in, in value. All right? People want to own these things. And so if BMW drops by 20%, as long as the world isn't over, you want to buy it and put it in your portfolio because you think BMW is going to be around 25 years from now. Okay. So this is a 3A2 um, Fibonacci retracement. And I think it's a buy zone. If that fails, then this is going to fall quite a ways, and I'll, I'll probably just back off. But why did it go up in the first place? Quantitative easing.
asset prices going up. So this is what I've been, uh, I was talking about earlier today. Um, since April, uh, asset prices have been coming down. The value of the euro has been going up. So imagine this whole time prices coming down on the German stock market. Euro was going up. Inversely correlated. So keep keep an eye on that. If the DAX starts to make higher highs, what might the euro be doing if the correlation stays the same? Cool. Well, pay attention. Is this a place where the DAX could go up? 38.2. Two. Not 33, not 40, 38.2, okay? Has it behaved in such a way that it's, it seems that market participants are aware of this 382? Let me remark it even more closely, okay? It, it, it touched twice. So therefore, if it makes a higher high, I will be a lot more comfort, uh, um, confident in a euro dollar short or a euro something, short euro versus something, right? You're, you are right, Ron. Past performance does not guarantee future results. That's why I said if the correlation stays the same. Anybody think that this reverse at... February, uh, sorry, April 1st had something to do with the end of the quarter. Okay. Do you think uh, wealth managers and hedge funds, equity hedge funds, do you think they want to end this quarter? with cash instead of stock? Do you think they want to be holding cash at the end of this quarter? No. They don't want to they don't want to hold cash. People didn't hire a hedge fund to hold their cash. If they wanted somebody to hold their cash, they would have put it somewhere else that was safer and would have paid them a better return. They don't want cash. They want to buy stock. Well, why do they get out of their stock positions then? Earnings. Earnings. So now that we're through the, and you say, well, this is the DAX. It doesn't matter. We're, I'm looking at DAX. I'm thinking S&P 500. It's the same thing. Global macroeconomics, guys. So uh, what I, I think they're going to want to buy back in, okay? Because if they're in cash, their clients can just call them up and say, well, if you're not going to use my money, Get, give it back, and I'll put it somewhere else more productive. M money is always going to find productivity. Okay, so if the hedge fund manager ain't using it, the client will ask for it back. Do you think that's what the hedge fund manager wants? Do you think he wants redemptions because inactivity? Hell no. You know how hard it is to raise money? So they're going to put it to work. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to watch this. And what I would like to see is exactly this. And I'll be short Euro USD because, wait for it. Oh, I didn't put it on this particular chart. I, I have it on a different Euro USD chart. But yeah, the reversal pattern, right? 
Okay. Um, oil. We're still almost there. What do I want to do up here? Let, let's see if I'm clear. Oh, yes. Yeah, sell oil here. The ridiculous part, you guys might remember if you attended the last event, but we've been talking about that way down in here as it's been rising. We've had the sell oil here plan for a very long time. We're so close now, but not quite. And there it is. We actually set the plan up in December. No joke. This is a trade plan that is now almost six months old. But I'm getting ready, Bubba. I'm getting ready. Six months of planning, guys. Holy smokes, eh? Okay, so we're pretty close. Patience, huh? It's looking interesting, though, guys. It's looking interesting. So you got to, like, as soon as we break below here, it's going to get interesting. And you can see, essentially, we, we, we've topped out. And it's so close to what we did in December. <laughs> predicting that it would come up and then back around. Crazy. I like you. You crazy. So uh, 5A cross down, but 25, you know, 2155 up. Oh, it's interesting. But at least you know what I'm doing, right? Somebody asked for the S&P 500. Okay. The plan was from the bottom of the range to the up of the range. And unless it, you know, unless it broke, the plan would be to trade it back down to the range. But the macro vision here is this. Well, you can see we, we ha we've had this as a buy zone down here for a long time. You can see old trade plans, right? This one here pointing up. So we finally got our break. Then you would plan out the retracement. We got the retracement, and so I'm thinking this. How long is the S&P 500 going to go up? Let me answer that. Mm, eight years. How long do you think it's going to go up? Okay. So that's the market how I read it. And you'll you'll see that just in the last day or two we breached sort of the range. It it's not 100% confirmed yet, but another good week would be fantastic, right? So you can measure it sort of like this if you if you want. You oh no most of the most of the time I just draw these things as like reminders. Um where's the uh where where's the grip? See here. Oh I see it's drawn it on the wrong side. Oh no, there it is. Eh. I'm kind of looking at it like this. Okay, you can see that we I had some bouncy bounces here, which then failed, so we had to reset it. Yeah, well, maybe um, you know I want to draw it differently. You are not alone. I am here with you. Though far apart. Now where is it? There it is.
Yeah, something like that, maybe. Yeah, that's kind of how I'm looking at it here. Do you think it'll be a dull summer like last summer? Um, well, my answer to that has been um, that last summer's doldrums was created by um, uh, the Bank of Japan doing quantitative easing and jacking up interest rates at the same time. What a stupid, stupid, stupid move that was. Um, so anyways, um, do we have a situation like that this summer? No. So m uh, many summers are quiet. Uh, many summers are, you know, can be profitable. Like let's say June and July, I tend to take lots of, you know, 50 pip winners and I'm not going for 300 pip winners. So I sort of like day job it. Um, and then um, August, I tend to build portfolios. Okay. So I'll, I'll play it similar to last year, but I, I don't think it'll uh, – so let, let's reverse it. Last summer was the least volatile in the entire history of Forex. Is it going to be like that this year? Or even less volatile, make a make a new record? No, no. But are summers quiet? Yeah. But you just adjust your strategy. It's no big deal. You still got to make money. Okay. Okay. Make sense. I think uh, I think we only got five minutes left. Can I can I help with any anything else? USDN? No, no, Ronnie. That's that's only NFP. I. Um, on my regular events now here at FX Street, they're only 75 minutes. <laughs> oh, I see. Which books do you in particular about trading? I already have yours. You know, I haven't read many others. So, um... Uh, yeah, uh, you know, that, that'd be about it. See, I'll tell you a funny story. W when I first started trading, um, I was struggling a, um, a bit, you know, like everybody, right? Um, and um, first of all, one thing I found was FX Street in the early days. That's how we ran into each other, right? Um, but also... Um, I wanted to read some books, and there just were not there were there were almost no books on forex, and the ones that w were out were just fluff. Forex made easy, like <laughs> so. There's nothing to buy. I mean, there literally were not any books. And there were some, like, courses and stuff you could take, but they were all run by scam artists and scumbags. So I was basically alone. And FX Street was like a startup. It was probably run out of Francesc's bedroom or something. I don't know. Um, but it was very, very young. My, my first Forex account didn't come with charts. 
people didn't use technical analysis and it, it was strange um <laughs> okay so that that so i came up with this idea that i would teach myself and then i would research forex any way i could and then i would write down the things i didn't understand then i would research those and then in the process of that research I would find other things I don't know, and I would research those. And I would put it in a logical order, and I it like I was writing a textbook. And that's how I kind of came to my my own book. Essentially, a lot of it is you know technical and fundamental analysis, but the other half is trader psychology and how to improve as a trader, which, you know, I, I thought needed to be said. Uh, Ron, it, yeah, it was good. In fact, uh, yesterday was my final. I, I aced it. So, not bad. Um, so, yeah, um, what book? You know, I, I don't think I, I, I read any. Um, but I, that, so that's how I, how I started is I, I said, well, I would just write my own textbook. Oh, yeah, it's interesting, Ronnie. Yeah, it's interesting stuff, but you, you, you don't. You don't need it, but you should have it if you're a professional. Um, you know, my first, I guess, introduction to fundamentals was passing the Series 3 test when I got licensed and registered in the United States as a professional currency trader. And that was interesting, but um, not helpful, but interesting. And it got me thinking because the questions when you take the series three is things like, all right, you're an, uh, 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 a grain elevator operator. And, you know, farmers have brought in, you know, 212 tons of, of you know, wheat. And the price is this and the expected price is that. Um, please explain how you'd use options or futures or a combination of options and futures to offset your risk. Okay. And then another, then the next question, um, you are producer of um, plastic chairs. And you buy a hundred million dollars of polymer a year, and you are worried about oil prices going up, you know, something stuff like that. And so you need a crack spread. It, you know, how do you do that? And then uh, another one would be: All right, you want your you're buying Chicago wheat and and. You're buying Chicago June wheat and selling Kansas City August wheat or September wheat. What kind of, you know, strategy is this and explain how how you make money? <laughs> You're like, well, none of that has to do with Forex, but you have to pass the thing if you want to be a Forex trader. Is it strange? But the government requires you to know that information to trade currencies professionally in the United States. And then they don't allow you to hedge your positions. And they don't allow you to make long-term positions. And somehow, that's good for the, the client. And then they make you write the most convoluted a misinformed disclosure document that is no joke, a hundred pages long, and somehow the client is supposed to read that and understand it. And that somehow is good for the client versus just having two pages 
of actual risks associated with the industry. No, they would rather have a, a hundred pages full of crap that doesn't mean anything to anything, to anybody. And in fact, my disclosure document had to have written in specific font, in specific font sizes, half of which would be capitalized, half of which would not be capitalized, talking about the risks associated with futures trading, which I didn't do as a spot forex trader, but was required by law to be in there. Pathetic, 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 embarrassing, disgusting situation. And if I argued, and I did argue against it, um, not good. Not good. Not a good situation. If I, if I had more time and wasn't in love with what I do every day, I would start a lobby firm to, uh, to re or lobby organization to represent retail professional Forex traders in the United States, and I would lobby the NFA. In fact, I'd go even farther than that. And I'd fold the NFA into the SEC and start normalizing rules and regulations so that Forex traders don't have different rules and, and wheat traders don't have rules and S&P 500 traders don't have different rules. And, like, honestly, people that trade corn and people that trade soybean meal have different rules for their trading pit. I mean, how are you supposed to – and then they're all taxed differently, Oh, my gosh. The world expects, right? The world uh, deserves something better. That's all. All right, we got to go. I love you, babe, but I got to jump. Thank you to FX Street for being wonderful people. Uh, I do this every single day, guys. Every single day you get 75 minutes of my time, and I then spend – time uploading videos to YouTube so that if you miss something, you can go back. Uh, feel free to watch them at youtube.com slash C slash Traders Way. Uh, you know, I just didn't see very, um, you know, I didn't see easy trades today. I don't mind making live trades in the market. Uh, I do it all the time, in fact. Um, and my track record's pretty gosh darn good, I think. Uh, but you'll have to talk to other people because I don't pip and tell. So anyways, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for your loyalty. Uh, um, apparently, these these um, these webinars are now become quite popular on FX Street, and um, I take great pride in that. So, um, awesome. <laughs>